Hello there, this is Rusty Anderson, and you're listening to Things We Said Today with Ken Michaels and Steve Marinucci. Hello, hello, and welcome once again to a Beatles show, which is called Things We Said Today. This is a weekly broadcast in which we take a look at what's going on in the world of the Beatles newswise. I'm Ken Michaels, one of the co-hosts of the show, known for my syndicated radio program on the Beatles called Every Little Thing, being joined by Mr. Beatles Examiner himself, my partner in crime. I know he doesn't like that phrase, but I'm going to use it anyway. Steve Marinucci. Hi, Steve. Hi, Ken. Hello, everyone. We're actually doing this show because in the past 24 hours or so, there was some, well, it was then, late-breaking news about a new Beatles release. And so we thought we had to do a show as quickly as possible on this. And by the time that this airs or gets posted, it may already be released or is about to be released. And it's called The Beatles Bootleg Recordings 1963. And, uh, Steve, why don't you uh, fill the folks in on what this is exactly? Well, what's happening... Actually, there's some background uh, necessary here. Um, What's basically happening here is this release is um, being motivated by the copyright laws in, in Europe. Right now, recordings go into public domain after 50 years. That's changing... Next year, to uh, they're being extended to 70 years, but to enjoy that 70-year protection, the recordings have to be published during the original 50 uh, before 50 years are up. Released, you mean? Released. Well, released, published. It's. Uh, I mean, it's kind of the same thing. Uh huh. But it, in any event, the, the person who really started this was Bob Dylan, because Dylan is putting out a. Uh, or has put out a collection of uh, 63 recordings, live recordings, radio and TV recordings, and outtakes from 63. And he's put it out on, on vinyl. And in ver- Ed, it's very limited. I think there's only 100 copies, maybe? Yeah. Um, some, yes, 100 copies. And obviously the price has gone through the roof for that, if you, you, know, if you can get it. But... Uh, not surprisingly, it's being it's available on the trading sites and all over the internet. Well, apparent, but Universal is doing is the same thing uh, with the Beatles. Uh, come Tuesday, they're putting out this Beatles bootleg recordings 1963, which I learned about yesterday. Uh, that's Tuesday because we normally tape these things on Wednesday, um, December 10th. Right, and I've since found out that there's a Beach Boys one coming out the same day called The Big Beat 1963, and notice it's a very, it's a very innocuous, it's not, doesn't say the Beach Boys, it's extremely low-key. So what's happening here is that both the Beatles and the Beach Boys, and apparently other groups, from what I'm told, will be doing it too, but this is going to be a trend where groups are going to put out recordings very low key, maybe just in the Beatles case and in the Beach Boys case digitally, and we don't know how long it's going to be available. Mm-hmm. And they're going to do this to try and extend the copyright protection on their on certain recordings. And it follows, and obviously we don't know this yet, that this is going to be happening every year. Um, that would be very interesting. That would be very interesting. And we also don't know where this is going to be. Now, the Dylan thing, according to uh, Alan Cozen in the New York Times, who was our guest last week, is um, it was, was available in downloads in France and Germany. We don't know what's going to happen as far as America goes yet, as far as, because there's been no official announcement as of right now that we're talking about it. The Times, uh, Alan Cozen today, the 11th, confirmed that the the album is coming the quote unquote album is coming out but the fact that they're doing this and the fact that more than one group is doing it 
um, there's a trend here, I mean, and it's an interesting thought. And obviously, with all the bootleg recordings that have come out over the past decade, two decades, not everything is going to get is going to get released. Hmm. Um, the, the Beatles are putting out 59 recordings as it is, which is pretty pretty high. The Beach Boys releases only 22. Right. So, you know, we don't know exactly. We're kind of you know, in a in a cloud here, we don't know exactly what's coming, uh, or uh, you know uh, where this is going to lead, how it's going to be distributed. We just know that it is coming. Yeah, and that's what's pretty amazing. It was done without, with very little publicity. Like I said, it hasn't even been announced officially yet, but it's you know it's amazing that. I mean, this is a dream come true for a lot of people to have these recordings out. Of course, there have been things out before, obviously the anthology. Mm-hmm. So it's not like this is the first time that bootleg or unreleased recordings or outtakes and things have been out before, but the fact that it's being done in this manner is is a first. Well, the thing is, you know, all this stuff has been bootlegged already. The people who follow the bootlegs know these recordings anyway. Right. But it still is a major deal that the Beatles themselves are even approving this because despite what you just said about the Beatles anthology, those are rare exceptions when you get alternate takes of recordings. And, you know, there's been such a tight rein on the Beatles catalog. They've been very protective of their music. You know, and, and for the people who collect bootlegs or the people that want anything and everything Beatles who feel that it should all come out, you can never do enough to please those people. But the mere fact that they're taking this step, and I find that even even with the fact that they're doing this so that they can protect the music, so that they can make money from it, even still, the fact that they're even doing this when for so many years they've been so careful about every release that they've ever done. Mm-hmm. You know, there are people out there who, for example, when Love was released, you know, there are fans who said, why do we need this? Put out the unreleased stuff. You don't have to do mashups of Beatle music that we have already. You know, there, there's a lot of fans that care more about all the unreleased stuff. And there's so much that's out there in varying quality. And there's some fans that don't even care about the quality. But the mere fact that the Beatles are even taking this step, I think, is extraordinary. And the one thing we don't know is the source of the recordings that they're putting out. Hmm. Good point. We, it could very well happen that they could use the the bootleg recordings. In some cases, you know, yeah, we don't we don't know. Uh, uh, everybody seems to be hoping, and of course, you know, I'm one of those that they use the the master recordings uh, so that the quality is excellent. But we don't know what they're going to do here yet, and that is going to also mean it's going to also hold a lot of uh, meaning into this whole project. Well, they really should. They have the master recordings for for the the recordings at EMI Mm -hmm. and all the BBC stuff, which they worked on on the the new collection on air where they tried to find the best source. So you would hope that the same care is being put into this. But the thing is that this is a rush release. It's not. What's what's significant about this is how quickly this all came about Mm. and how much of this is a rush release. And so you you think that this wasn't planned at all earlier in the year, after the news about Dylan putting out his recordings? Given the way that the the Apple Brain Trust moves so slowly, no, I honestly don't. I honestly think this was um, this was a last minute decision. Wow! But uh, I could you know obviously that could be that's just a guess on my part. I don't know. They must have known about the copyright laws in Europe. They must have seen this coming. Certainly, uh, obviously, certainly they did. The question is whether or not they decided they were going to do anything with it. I mean, Paul's been Paul's been busy. Ringo's been busy. So I don't know. It, I mean, I can't. I, it, it's hard to say. I don't want to suggest that that they they ignored it, and that's not true. But mm. I don't know. I honestly don't know whether they whether this timeline for this was purposeful or not. I don't know. There's also the thought that. Since they just released on air, why would they, a month later, <laughs> release all these other BBC recordings to even compete with that? Well, that's part of the, that's part of my thinking that this was a last minute decision. In that, obviously, with the timing of of on air, 
you would have thought that if they were going to do something like this, they would have changed the the timeline a little bit, made the timeline a little different. But you know, again, we don't, we don't, we have no idea. And not only that, there's other recordings from 1963 that they can pull as well that that are not even on here. So right. there must have been some thought in these particular selections. And for those that don't know, there are 15 studio outtakes, and there's 44. Uh, more live BBC tracks. And they actually tacked on, and I find this really interesting, two demos. And, of course, these demos have been around forever, and people who who collect this stuff and collect bootlegs know all about it. The demo for Bad to Me is on there. And there's also the demo, which I really love, which, you know, doesn't get talked about all that often uh, for I'm in Love, Mm -hmm. which they gave to the foremost. And Billy J. Kramer also recorded it, and he even did a recent version of that song. But it's just John on the piano, and it's and it's wonderful. So I just love the fact that they tacked those two songs on there at the end. So there are uh, 59 tracks all together. And uh, the bulk of it is BBC material, but still, the fact that they're releasing anything that's unreleased <laughs> like this, and so much of it, it's just... Uh, it's wonderful, and I, I'm, I'm I'm actually a little disappointed. It's more BBC than outtakes. I wish there were more outtakes there, but that's my my feeling. Uh-huh. Um, still, this is I mean, this is a, a landmark release. This is a you know historic situation. Yeah, and I'm sure that for for the casual fan, they may not even care about a lot of this stuff. They may not care about outtakes, or they may not care about getting another recording of certain songs that they did on BBC Radio. There's certain songs they did many times over. And, you know, do you really need to have another one? They'll have that kind of an attitude. But then, like I said, there are those fans that have to have everything. Well, I mean, we don't know how long these things are going to be available. Mm-hmm. That's one thing. And the and I know I've heard questions, uh, I've gotten questions on Facebook today about lossless, um, the format of these things. And so that's going to be an issue, too. Um, people people don't want MP3s of this stuff. So, I mean, we'll see what's going on. Uh, I know that somebody told me that you cannot, and I and I confess that I'm not real um, up on this part of it. But with iTunes, there are no lossless. But that's not true because your iTunes purchases can be made into Apple lossless files. So, I think that's going to be okay myself. Um, if you're looking for FLAC or one of those formats, I think you're going to have to convert them yourself to get that. Yeah. But as far as the compressed MP3 formats, the really you know dreadful, dreadfully compressed things, um, um, I think you're going to be able to get around that. I think so. I'd, um, we'll we'll find out next week, I suppose. But okay. the, I mean, the big quite, the big thing is though that this is coming. That's what's what's huge about this. It would be nice, you know, if, because most of the people who who want this are the, I hate to make the label hardcore, uh, the hardcore fan, but a lot of those people who are first generation and second generation fans, they want this stuff on vinyl or they want it on CD. They don't just want downloads. <laughs> they don't just yeah. want MP3s. Mm-hmm. And, and by the way, I should mention that the Beach Boys thing which is called the Big Beat 1963 is on Amazon. It's not. Um, it's already. It's already listed on Amazon. It's not available yet, but the, the list is already there. The Beatles one is not, and apparently it's going to be an iTunes. That's going to be an iTunes exclusive. I'm guessing. Yeah. This also makes me wonder, <laughs> and this is a stretch too. But when the Beatles finally made their deal with iTunes, did they see this coming? I'm going to say that- no. I'm going to say no. Um, I mean, it took a long time before they finally made a deal for their music to be released digitally. So this could have been a very attractive part of the package. Well, I, I would think it, it did not enter in, into the picture because, remember, the negotiations went on forever. Mm-hmm. And so I think, I think this copyright situation came in, I believe it came in much later. So I'm not... I, I don't think I don't think really they knew um, way back then. Yeah, I, I think you're right. It was just you know speculation on my part. 
Mm -hmm. Because like I just said, I I just find it really ironic that all this BBC stuff is coming out so soon after this new compilation on air. So it really looks like they didn't plan this, and this this is something that's going to be rushed out. Right. So it's interesting. It's uh, cra- it's crazy. Okay. It really it uh, it opens up the doors to all these possibilities of there being compilations every single year. You know, you just don't know. Wouldn't it be nice if we got a compilation like this at the end of each year as a little present? Yeah, and how they'll handle it next year if they'll handle it in a more deluxe fashion rather than this way. Although, given that they, what they know, I it, I would think it'll stay the same. And but, what and what they'll think is worthy of release. Yeah, because, that's the that's the the big thing. I mean, obviously, for for those of us that want everything out, we would love these things to be huge compilations, and I I can't see that I can't see that happening. But if they want to protect their recordings, they're going to have to do something. In a way, it's too bad. But on the other hand, seventy years is a long t- is a is a long long time. And uh-huh. There's a lot of good recordings that are public domain now that deserve to be more widely available. I'm not saying the Beatles fall into that category. I'm personally, I'm a big fan of public domain movies. And if you look around, I'm not trying to get off the subject too much, but there are some, there are a lot of great movies available cheaply on DVD in public domain collections. And I'm not saying again the Beatles are going to end up there. But there are also a lot of recordings from American history, from back in American history, that are available in public domain. And public domain is a part of American heritage, so, hmm. and it's also a part of heritage period. So, and there you're talking about physical copies too. Right, right. It it also you know you have to make it clear that this package is what it is, and that it's not the recordings that are part of that core catalog. It's not, and it's also not yeah. a collection put together for artistic reasons. I think that's that's an important designation to make. This mm. is basically something put together like you throw together a you know burn a CD almost right. because they're trying to they're doing it for a reason. Do you agree with that? I agree. Yeah. It also makes me wonder since we were talking about on air a few shows ago and we were kind of hoping and you came up with the great idea that what they really should do is release all the BBC recordings chronologically. Mm-hmm. You know, I would love to see it packaged that way in that context, to hear it as it was played on the radio with, you know, a certain group of songs packaged together as it was, instead of shuffling all the songs and putting together different compilations, which is nice. You know, it's just another way of listening to it. But it's a different feel altogether to hear it the way that the Beatles actually did it on the radio. Right. But given the fact that they've already put out the four CDs legitimately, and now they'll put out this collection with a, with more. It'd be difficult for me to conceive that they would that they would repeat a lot of those tracks again. You think? Eh, you never know. How no, many, time, I'm, it, how, how many true. times has uh, Beatles? You, you don't ever never know, and maybe after we're all dead and gone, maybe they will. You know, the next generation of the Beatles Brain Trust will do that. Uh huh. But I think. For now, I don't think it'll. I don't think it'll happen. I don't think it'll happen. How many times have Beatles songs been repackaged in different collections? Well, that's true too. But we're also. But in that particular case, you're talking about studio versions. There's a difference between stereo studio versions and non-stereo mono BBC things, especially some of the some of those recordings that were were not from the original tapes um i think there's there is definitely a difference there so i mean if they had every if they had all the bbc recordings from the original tapes in sterling quality then i think that would be very likely but that's not what they have so well we'll see we'll we'll be talking about it very soon we will see Well, well yeah obviously we'll see what happens on tuesday but the this is a this is an exciting development it's it, it's unexpected. The shock, when I posted the story uh, yesterday, the initial shock was astounding. Everybody was just totally, what? Really? Hmm. 
I mean, any but anybody that had heard about the Dylan thing, and I'd kind of heard about the Dylan thing, and I hadn't really paid much attention to it. Anybody that heard about the Dylan thing was probably going, okay. And the fact that there's going to be more beyond the Beach Boys and the Beatles and Dylan can't be too surprised. So we'll see what happens. I'll be, I'll, it'd be, it'll be very interesting to see. I mean, we could come up with wish lists of groups that we would want to see out there. Yeah, well, to me, the whole thing is that it's just, it's amazing to me that this is even being done at all. And I realize that it's being done so that they can make money from this and protect these recordings. But still, they don't have to release these recordings. <laughs> they don't have to. And they've always been so careful about everything they've ever put out. But see, now this is something we were talking about before we started taping. If they don't release it, anybody can release it. And they would rather not have that. That's the one thing they don't want. And I can't say I blame them there. Because I've seen some of the, the if you look on Amazon Co. UK, because you won't really find them on Amazon.com, but if you look on Amazon Co. UK, you will see some of these collections. And they are, they're not real expensive, sure, but they are taking the Beatles recordings and putting them in different contexts, in, you know, in inferior compilations. Mm. Uh, there's a couple, there's actually, I think, one that I remember seeing that had, um, was called something like British Hit Parade 1963, that had every single British hit um, from then. And I, for some people, it's probably interesting. Actually, for me, it would be interesting because I'm a music fanatic and I love hearing deep cuts, you know, like that. But for some people, it's not going to it's not going to be of a, a lot of interest. And so, and they can't put out their own. Well, at least not yet. They can't put out their own albums, you know, Beatle albums, and get away with it. So it didn't seem to bother the Beatles that all these bootlegs have come out in all these years? Sure it did. I don't think it did. Or else oh, they would have yeah, put they, out more. They hunted down those uh, the guys that had the Let It Be outtakes. But I'm saying it didn't inspire them to release that stuff. Well, it did. You mean uh, you mean outside of the anthology? Yeah. I'd heard that, that uh, there was a lot of grumbling about those outtakes. Well, the outtakes came from... They were, they were taken from their studio, and they were digitally copied, and... There's a whole, I mean, there's a whole big, there's a whole book of all that stuff. Right. Um, but I'm saying, think about the tons of bootlegs that have come out through the years, mm -hmm. where the Beatles lost money, or it could have been money that they would have made from all these bootlegs, and good quality ones, studio recordings. Right. You know, they didn't do anything about that. The only thing that, that they did that came close was the Beatles anthology. Right. And they also, also, they also... They also denied, for years, I know Ringo had talked, had said for years that every good thing had came out, and and everybody would kind of go, Ringo, you ever seen these? <laughs> you know, um, and and they're still they're built, still basically keeping the company line that, you know, that everything good has come out until we say it hasn't come out. Right. And so. Or maybe in their minds, they really believe that the best stuff is what's come out. Yeah. Or maybe they think that what hasn't been released isn't worthy of release. They could be thinking that. Now, what will really be interesting is if later on we get to see the 20-minute Helter Skelter, <laughs> the <laughs> Carnival of Light, um, <laughs> you know, all those things that uh, that uh, we've uh, always hoped and prayed and to get. Um, it'll be interesting to see where they take those releases down the road because in 1963 there really wasn't that much there. Mm. So it'll be fun to see what turns up from these recordings. From it'll these be releases. interesting to see how many tracks will be on compilations. Will it be as many as these? 59 tracks, something, you know, that's that's a lot of songs right there, a lot of tracks right there. Right. And where will the sources come from? Because the, once the BBC recordings dry up after 65 when there was only the one show in 65, what are you going to draw on? Live recordings, I suppose? I don't know. It's, it'll be interesting to know you know, what direction they go in with this. Right. But if, if we know that we can expect something like this every year, in addition to anything else that comes out on the Beatles, that would be a nice little bonus. Right. We will see. Okay. So that ends our conversation about this brand-new release. 
called The Beatles Bootleg Recordings 1963. And if you want to get in touch with us, you can write to us at our email address, which is things we said today radio show at gmail.com. You can get in touch with me at my email address, every little thing at att.net. You can also check out my own website, kenmichaelsradio.com. And for Steve, how do people get in touch with you? Uh, you can you can get to me at beatlesexaminer at gmail dot com. I'm on Facebook. I'm obviously at Beatles Examiner. I'm all I'm all over the place. Um, but uh, uh, beatlesexaminer at gmail dot com is the best way to um, get to me. Okay. All right. So for things we said today, I'm Ken Michaels. Thanking you all so much for listening. And we'll see you next time. And this is Steve Marinucci saying, we'll see you next time. <laughs>